Hello comrades, this is John Wayne Cheeseburger speaking. Welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. Меня зовут Сергей. Я был рожден в Советском Союзе. So today we are returning to the topic of World War II handicap veterans. And we're going to talk about uh, what kind of benefits Soviet government provided uh, for such people. But before we get going, I would like to show you a couple um, interesting documents uh, from the Soviet era. This green book uh, from 1976, it titled Secret, Secretna. I want to call it the Bible of the Soviet mass media. And the title of this book, this Bible, List of Data Information Forbidden for Publishing in Public Open Sources, Radio and TV. So this cute Soviet Verboten reference book was in use from 1948 all the way to 1991. So every newspaper, every radio outlet or TV station had this book as a reference. Can we talk about this or can we talk about that? So one day when I'm going to run out of topics for Shanka show, I probably just going to make a series when we call it days of our Soviet lives, there'll be like maybe 100 or 200 episodes just looking and translating this beautiful green book. But for right now, we're just going to take a look at one page. So on the page 20, chapter number 3, information about Great Patriotic War. Number 98. It is forbidden to publish general information about effects of war on workers' health, such as pandemics, birth rates drop, food rations, and their effects on population health, living conditions, and such. And below that, number 100. It is forbidden to publish general information about the amount of World War II invalids, generally in the USSR, as well as in republics, regions, cities, and villages. So here's your small clue that Soviet government actually considered secret information to publish anything about the amount of uh, war handicapped people and just and it specified not just all over Soviet Union, even in a little town you're not allowed to say how many uh, you have World War II veterans who are handicapped. Okay, so the other document we're looking at, it's uh, from the declassified KGB documents, and it's actually a report from the mail censors, so the people who open uh, mail and check it out for stuff. So there's a report, and part of this report is titled uh, Complaints from the War Invalids. So that came from the letter uh, written uh, from Ukraine, Vinitsa region, to some uh, military outfit in January of 1946, so shortly after the World War II was over. And the letter said, my life is very bad right now. Well, everyone knows about the conditions these days. I became a cripple. Why did the bullet fail to kill me? Why do I have to live as a cripple? I asked the guys to finish me off. They didn't want to, and now no one cares about my condition. But what can you do? I will have to suffer for the rest of my life. And what's interesting, on the bottom left, there's a little note that says, so some kind of document K was uh, sent to a local um, prosecutor in this uh, Tulchin. So there's a Vinitsky Oblast, it's a Vinitsky region, and then it's a smaller like a county called Tulchinsky County, I'll say that way. So KGB or NKVD at that time, you know, they check the letters, they find complaints, and then they send notifications to the local officials or local NKVD places uh, to follow up what's going on. And maybe they help the guy, um, you never know. And here's another interesting uh, unclassified document. It used to be top secret, совершенно секретно. Appears it was dated in uh, from 1948. Uh, so this is from the high-ranking NKVD official uh, sent out to the all uh, military censorship offices uh, from army, fleet, and such. And it's uh, talking about confiscating any photos of World War II handicapped veterans. They said they noticed um, 
cases where the pictures were sent in letters showing uh, pictures of single or group of uh, handicapped invalidity of, of I keep on saying World War II, but it's a great patriotic war. So there's instructions saying that they must be confiscated and uh, verify that letters don't contain any negative information about it. So here you go. So any information, anything was suppressed about life of a handicapped uh, veterans in the Soviet Union. Okay, so now we are ready to talk about benefits that Soviet government provided for its uh, World War II handicapped veterans. As a kid that grew up in the Soviet Union in 70s and 80s, I definitely remember that every store had a sign said that Invalidi Velika Tishna Vaini Absluzhuitsa Vni Ochiridi. So, Invalids and Veterans of World War II, or Great Patriotic War, uh, gets a service skipping the line. So, there's like always <laughs> considered should be a, would be a line. So, there's the line. If you're a veteran or a handicapped person from World War II, you can skip the line and purchase goods without waiting. Uh, for those who follow my channel, uh, you may recall uh, my story about summer of 1986 uh, when I left Kiev. So that's after Chernobyl power plant exploded in April of 1986. Uh, so after school was over, uh, me and my friend uh, left for Leningrad to stay with his grandmother. She wasn't a handicapped or veteran, but she lived in Leningrad during the blockade of 1941 till 1944, I believe. Uh, so later on, uh, people, like even civil population that lived in the city of Leningrad during the blockade, they got the same benefits as veterans. Uh, so I kind of enjoyed a little bit this uh, skipping the line uh, benefit. One day she took us around Leningrad to show the most ancient places. And of course, you know, it's a tourist Mecca. So there were always lines everywhere. But she just pulls her little ID, shows to the person, and they will let us go skipping the line. Uh, like, for example, we went to see Petergov, that uh, famous uh, summer residence of, uh, so, uh, <laughs> of Russian czars. And it was a huge line to get on the ship because you, uh, you take a boat to that place and we just skip that big line. That was pretty awesome. And as I mentioned earlier, after Leonid Brezhnev became the leader of Soviet Union, uh, benefits uh, for the veterans of World War II and especially handicapped veterans improved drastically. And maybe that was the reason why my grandfather, Sergei, who spent four years being prisoner of war in Germany and then almost died in Stalin's labor camp, he really loved uh, Leonid Brezhnev and even put uh, his picture among the photos of his relatives, like on the most prominent spot. And I remember uh, two uh, neighbors in our village uh, received a free car, ZAZ Zaporozhets, because they were um, invalids of the World War II, although the rumor was that one of them uh, he was a teenager and they were playing with the grenades that they found in the woods. So he got a shrapnel up his butt cheek, but he managed to get a paperwork that he was invalid because he got hurt <laughs> during the war. But right after the war, 1946-47, uh, things were quite bleak for the veterans and for the handicapped veterans. Like they were getting a stipend. Uh, like So the first category veterans, so they're missing all limbs. Uh, we're getting between 80 to 150 rubles per month. The invalids of the second category, so you're missing one limb, leg, or arm, uh, we're getting twice less of so between 40 to 80 rubles. And for comparison, one liter of milk was 10 rubles. So pretty much if you're second category missing a leg, you get enough money to buy one gallon of milk per month because it's about 40 rubles. One kilogram of pork was 120 rubles. So your first category invalid, you pretty much uh, get enough money to buy one kilogram of pork a month. They also were getting like a so-called payok. So it's like a food assistance, um, which consisted what I found like nine kilogram of flour, about uh, 400 grams of uh, sukhari. So that's like a dried bread croutons. Uh, some sugar, uh, four kilogram of salt per month, and one liter of kerosene, which is not food, but that was part of that assistance. 
And another interesting uh, type of assistance was assistance with the firewood because a lot of people lived out in the country or live in small towns. They were using wood burning stoves uh, to heat their houses in the winter. So central government uh, told local governments to provide assistance to the invalids with firewood. But they're like, uh, of course, they didn't have manpower. So they say, yeah, sure, you can go to the forest and cut some trees and chop some wood. But of course, when you're a handicapped person, you can't do it. So that was quite useless. So a lot of uh, invalids had a hard time to stay warm in the winter because they had the right to get some free firewood, but they just couldn't. Like my grandparents and the photos I'm showing you, that's pretty much being retirees. Uh, that's how they spend all their summer harvesting firewood in a collective farm forest. You know, they will assign them a specific area and mark some dr trees that they can harvest. And that's all summer will be cutting, uh, sowing that wood and then chopping it, cutting and chopping it all summer long. So they have some firewood for winter. And of course, uh, World War II veterans as well as World War II handicapped veterans has a special, uh, special waiting list. So not the general waiting list, but just for them. So they were shorter. So for example, if you wait for apartment, uh, 10, 20 years, maybe if you're a handicapped person later during Khrushchev time and Brezhnev time, you might wait only five years. Same for cars. I mean, if you're a handicapped person, but you still can drive like regular car. So instead of waiting um, nine years to buy a Lada, uh, you can get a car maybe in four years or two years. Well, comrades, uh, that's all uh, what I have for you today. I hope you learned something new. As always, don't forget to like this video, share with your friends, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, a cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life and soul.